explain everything is to go over the concept of gene therapy. As we did in class, I'm going to show you a uh, bit of a, a short version of an article, and you have to determine the following. First of all, you want to find out what the gene of interest is. Now, this is going to be the gene that is attempting to fix a problem, generally speaking. Okay, so the gene of interest is going to be the good guy. Um, the next question is, where did that gene come from? Okay, so what was the source of that gene of interest? Okay, and this is going to be the foreign DNA. So in which species or where did that gene of interest come from? Then you have to find out what is the vector. Okay, the vector is the means by which we're going to get that foreign um, DNA, that gene of interest, into a host cell. So what is the vector? Now we've looked at viral vectors. We also said that plasmids could be vectors. Um, the next article that you're going to look at is actually neither of these, and it's something new. So next final question is what is the host cell okay and generally speaking this host cell is going to have something wrong with it and the goal is to insert that gene of interest and fix that cell so the first thing I do when I see an article like this is I look for the fancy lettering because that generally is going to be the acronym for the gene of interest so you can see right now that you immediately see this thing called HS V, T, K, okay, and generally just make sure that it is associated with a G. Okay, so again, H, S, V, K, T, K, gene. So that is going to be the gene of interest. That's the first thing I usually look for. The next is where did it come from? Okay, so reading this, um, it says demonstrate a virus-free delivery. The first goal of the group was to develop a nanoparticle that could efficiently carry DNA encoding a gene known as HSVKTK. It doesn't say. Okay, I read this over and I actually went back to the original article and it was, it's not saying where they got the um, DNA from. Okay, so it's saying carry DNA coding a gene, but it doesn't say where it's from. So in this case, um, we don't know what the foreign DNA is. Okay, the next bit of information you want to look for now is how did it deliver the gene of interest? Okay, and that's what this whole article is actually about. So generally, we've been looking at viral vectors or plasmids where you take the DNA and you cut it up with restriction enzymes and you make recombinant DNA. This is a completely two new method, and what they're going to try to do now is use what they're calling nanoparticles. Okay. So here they are looking at biodegradable nanoparticles. Okay, now these are again um, very small, small on the nano scale um, plastics or polymer structures, and um, it's in the whole field of nanotechnology. So what they're doing is that they're actually putting the DNA inside these nanoparticles. Okay, so this was a virus-free delivery. So we weren't using viral vectors, we weren't using plasmids, we're just using these little nanoparticles. And they're trying to see if they can use these to get the gene of interest into the host cell. So what is the host cell? Okay, so we have to take a look now. If we just continue to read, we will see that the um, nanoparticle was injected into the brains of rats with this particular form of brain cancer. Okay, and the gene, as it's discussed up here, okay, produces an enzyme that turns a compound, that they, a drug that they would be giving, okay, a particular drug, um, into a toxic um, chemical that actually kills dividing brain cancer cells. So, in summary, the gene of interest is the one with the fancy name, the S, the HSVTK gene. Okay, it will always be associated with the word gene somewhere. The foreign DNA, we don't know, it didn't tell us. The vector were these biodegradable nanoparticles, and the host cell were, was the brains of rats with these gliomas.